Hi everyone. Let's create another post processing effect that's again very simple to program. The result can be quite useful. For example, if we want to simulate TV signal interference in our game and control the visual appearance of that effect with parameters. So let's do it. So just like in the last tutorial, we'll need an image to which we'll apply our algorithm. As you may know from previous videos, I use a screenshot from our game Whispers of Prague for this purpose, so I'll start by creating the usual scene, right clicking on the scene folder, create new scene, 2D scene, let's call it Jitter. OK, now I'll find the mentioned screenshot and drag it to the scene so that um, Sprite 2D node was automatically created and in the inspector let's cancel the centered in the offset category and let's reset transform position to 0, 0. OK, now I'm scrolling down to the material section and adding a new shader material click and add a new shader which is called jitter.gd shader type shader mode canvas item and i'll put it to the shaders folder and create and click again to open it in the shader editor let's expand this window and as always we'll delete everything we don't need leaving only the fragment function leave uh, deleting vertex deleting white OK, so as we saw at the beginning of the video, this effect is based on the rapid horizontal movement of individual pixels while applying a pseudorandom factor to achieve a certain irregularity. This means that, once again, we'll use the usual pseudorandom function, which I'll copy from previous shaders and paste directly into the code to avoid typos while retyping. I have it here in clipboard, so just pasting. It's called hash12. As we know, it means that it returns a one-dimensional float value and takes two-dimensional vector as a parameter. OK, and now the fragment function. This time, we don't need to deal with any symmetry or aspect ratio, so we can simply work with the UV coordinates as they are available in the shader. Back to UV is UV in uppercase. Next, I'll define a new variable, which I'll call jitter. I'll write the following line and then I explain it. Float jitter equals hash one two vector two time and UV y times two minus one. OK, so what do we have here? We are getting the value of the hash12 function, whose x coordinate changes over time, this one, while the y coordinate remains the same, uvy, for the entire row. This is to ensure that fluctuations occur only in the horizontal direction, which is the basis of our jitter effect. And as we can see, the hash12 function returns values in the range from 0 to 1, which corresponds to the fract function. However, we want to shift pixels both left and right, so a range of negative 1 to 1 would be more useful, and we achieve that with this transformation, multiplying by 2 and subtracting 1. Finally, we add the value of the jitter variable to the x coordinate of the current pixel and display that pixel. Let's try it out. So uvx in increased by the jitter value and color, which is a vector 4. We take the texture of our texture and the coordinates of the pixels are uv. OK, let's show everything. We definitely have some jitter here, but it doesn't quite match what we had in mind. We'll need to apply some constraints, but first I'll temporarily 
uh, pause this effect so that the shaking doesn't distract us while we work. Let's comment out this line. Cool. We can continue now. We'll want to control both the width of the pixel displacement and the intensity of the effect. So I'll add two uniform parameters, which I'll call power and intensity right here. Uh, uniform float power with uh, int range and the initial value zero. And the range would be from zero to one with a step point zero one and uniform float intensity with another hint range and this time let's put the default value 2.5 and again it will go from 0 to 1 with the step point 0 1. Okay so let's first see what happens when we use the power value in the code. So I think we can add it here jitter would be multiplied by power and let's comment out this line wait for it okay <laughs> nothing happens because the parameter is zero let's increase that yeah something is definitely there but um it seems that the slider is too sensitive to small changes so we'll use a value 10 times smaller in the code like this multiplied by 0.1 now when i try it it definitely looks better now and even when i move the slider all the way to the end we can still see traces of the original image however there is still too much distortion because right now we are displacing all the pixels while to achieve the desired effect it would be enough to move only some of them that's what the intensity parameter will be used for so we'll need a function that returns zero for some parameter values and one for others so we can limit the number of pixels affected by the effect and that's precisely how the step function works as we can see in its description you just define an edge value which is then compared with x the value so i will modify the jitter calculation in this way and then explain it so here we will improve this line by this step one minus intensity and the value is absolute value of jitter and of course we need to multiply the rest Okay, so we want the edge value, this part, to be the opposite of intensity. That's why we are subtracting that from one, because the higher the intensity, the more pixels should pass through this filter. And since we know that the jitter variable uh, is uh, takes values in the range from negative one to one, we'll convert it to positive numbers using the absolute value okay and now we are done we can try adjusting both parameters and observe the result so increasing power and working with intensity more or less now only some pixels are affected now more of them now probably all of them and yes i guess it works perfectly that was pretty short today, wasn't it? Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If we control the parameters of this shader from GD script, we can simulate, for example, the operation of a signal jammer, or maybe an attempt to fine tune a signal that's being interfered with by our enemies. Or we could apply this effect to the entire game screen when the player enters an area contaminated by radiation. There are plenty of possibilities and everyone will surely find the best one for their project. And once again, I'd like to mention that this shader will also be included in the already extensive Godot shader pack, which I've linked in the description of this video. For now, take care, good luck with your game projects and shaders, and I'll see you in the next video.